Proof coins are a really interesting investment collectible. They have so many different potentials and pitfalls as well. And as consumers, it's down to us to work out what is right when the coin arrives. So inspecting your coins, looking at them and making sure everything is all okay is critical. So today I wanna to share some tips, hints and tricks to what I do to make sure that the proof coins I buy are as good as they possibly can be. Backyard Bullion here and a very warm welcome to you all joining me for a Precious Metal Ramble. Now today I want to talk a little bit about proof coins, the ownership of them, tips, hints and tricks of things that you should think about doing when you take delivery of your proof coins, things to factor in about storage and ownership of them and potentially looking to sell them down the line because all of those little factors contribute to the potential success of the coins that you might have. So lots of stuff to get through today. I hope there's something for everybody, whether you're a seasoned stacker or brand new to the market and looking to get perhaps some of your first proof coins at the moment. I know I'm enjoying the offerings that are coming from the Royal Mint at the moment and I'm sure there are a few other people out there who are starting to look at these coins potentially as something to diversify into. So I thought it would be an interesting video to share some tips, hints and tricks. Please remember though, it's not financial advice. I'm just here sharing my thoughts and opinions. So with that, let's crack on and go forward. Now, for those that perhaps don't know, or those that do, but perhaps wants a bit of a refresher, proof coins, what are proof coins? So uh, proof coin is the term used by mints to describe a coin, which is basically the creme de la creme of a particular offering. So most offerings from mints around the world will come basically in two categories, bullion and proof. There might be a few intermediary ones where you have like perfect BU examples, but generally speaking, it's proof and bullion. And proof is basically the better standard. And for those that really don't know quite how coins are made, I've got a little coin here just to show you. It's just a bullion coin, an Austrian Philharmonica. There's two sides to a coin, of course, we all know that. But basically what happens is they'll get a blank coin. It'll be completely blank, no design on it whatsoever. They'll have the two dies made, and a die is the thing with the design on. They'll place it on one. They'll have another that comes down and presses into the silver or the gold, and it makes the coin. Now, with a bullion strike, with a bullion coin, you'll have thousands going through the production line on a given day, probably more than that to be quite frank, but basically they'll put the blank in, it'll go bush, off it goes, next coin in, bush, off it goes, next coin in. With a proof coin, it's much higher standard. So the uh, the dies themselves are held to a higher standard. They are made and finished to a much sharper and crisper look, often with highly polished areas on them. And then in addition to that, they are struck more than once. So a proof coin is often struck three, four, five, even six times to get the real depth and definition of those and then what we like to think as coin collectors and coin buyers as well is that these coins are then inspected to make sure that they are as good as they can be before being sent out now that's a question for quality control of various mints around the world and one would hope and imagine that we have perfect coins coming out i mean that's what a proof coin is meant to be it's meant to be the perfect example of a given coin but sadly, quality control is never perfect, and especially when you get coins that are minted in the thousands, you often do find there will be some that slip through uh, the net, and you'll get some which are not so good. So it's important as a consumer to know what to look for when you get your coins, when you get delivery of your coins from... I've got the Royal Mints out here. This is primarily where I buy my proof coins from um, at the moment, and I thought it would be prudent to really talk about that as there are a lot of proof coins coming out this year um, that will be of interest to a lot of people in the Platinum Jubilee and beyond I'm sure. So basically what you're looking for in a proof coin is a flawless, floor free uh, version of the coin without any big dings, dents, scratches. Now the first thing that you'll see here, I've, I've got the you know, the packaging, goodness me, there's so much packaging here. If we just uh, scan back over to all of this, there's all of the different packaging that comes with the different products. Now, packaging is a really important part of a collector's item set, a group of uh, different paraphernalia that make up the whole coin. And it's not to be ignored, it's to be kept safe, secure, and ideally, uh, you know, from the Royal Mint, they come in these cardboard boxes. I've got these other ones here that these smaller coins came in. Keep them. Make sure that they are safe and protected because this is a lovely specimen of a box. And a lot of people will think, ah, it's just the coin that matters. It's not the box. But 
trust me, if you've got a shabby looking box and somebody comes up and says, right, I want to buy that coin. Now that guy's got a shabby box, that guy's got a good box. They'll go for the good box um, pretty much every time unless the price is ridiculously different. So it is important and I would very much recommend that you pay attention to that because I didn't in my first couple of uh, proof coins and I've got some real shabby looking boxes for some of my Queen's Beast proofs back in the day. But it is what it is. If you do have a shabby box, um, it's not the end of the world. Your coin's not going to be devalued so much that uh, you won't ever be able to sell it, but it does make a difference. Now, in terms of the actual handling of all of this, you'll notice that I'm handling everything with my bare hands, and that's absolutely fine. Some people will take it to an extra degree and handle things with uh, with gloves, even on this side of things. I'm not too bothered about that. I mean, this is a gloss finish box, so you will easily see that there are smudges, fingerprints left on it quite easily from handling, but those will clean off very easily if needed. So of course when I was looking, or when I'm looking to sell this coin at a later date, uh, you know, giving this a good clean uh, with a nice cloth to make sure it's spec free and, uh, you know, fingerprint free would be absolutely a must. Uh, present it well, look at it well, but handling all of the paraphernalia with bare hands is fine. The big no-no is handling the coins with bare hands. So you'll see that these coins have all come supplied in capsules from the Royal Mint. And that's usually what happens with proof coins. You'll be, I think, hard pressed to find any mint out there in the world that supplies a proof coin in a raw form just with the silver or gold out there ready for you to handle. And one of the biggest mistakes that I have always heard and seen of proof coin buyers and brand new buyers to proof coins is that they take things out of capsules and they have a good hard look at them and it sometimes will ruin the coin. It will literally ruin the coin if you handle this with a bare hand and you're not you know, trained appropriately to do so. There are a very few minority of people that say handling even proof coins with bare hands is the best method to do it, but really only by the by the rim of the coin, by the edge of the coin. So if you're holding the coin, hold it like, like this, but I just don't think it's worth it. Um, you know, there are different types of gloves that you can get that you can look to handle coins with. I've got a bunch of cotton gloves, which are not the right coin gloves to use for things like this because you'll still get condensation coming through. The actual material of the cotton gloves is not perfect either. It can leave marks on coins, especially when they're so, so highly polished. Um, so if you are going to look to potentially handle raw proof coins, then you'll want basically powder free, um, you know, sort of rubber gloves, latex gloves or the like. And, um, you know, there are channels out there that have done this and show them. Uh, Shadow Stack is a great one. He's got those black gloves, which are, as I said, powder free and they look really, really good. And that's one way of being, that's the, like the nth degree of being able to look at your coins and examine them. So if you are wanting to really get up close and check your coins, then handling them without the capsule does give you an edge, does give you an advantage, but it also is a risk because if you don't handle it right, or if, even if you're doing everything right and you've got your, your gloves on, you've got everything prepared, you're in a, uh, another factor of course is, you know, your general environment has dust particles. And if you open the capsule, you run the risk of potentially having dust particles settle on the coin. Now, whilst the dust particle won't necessarily damage the coin and can be brushed off or blown off very easily, <clears throat> it can lead to more problems. So if you get a bunch of dust landing on your coin as you're inspecting it, and then you go, oh, I'm going to blow on it to get rid of the dust and you spittle on the coin. Or if you then try and do something else, you know, it's this rolling snowball effect that can really damage a coin and uh, really hurt you on a proof ownership. So in terms of checking out your coins, there are a number of different options and tools available. I would recommend to anybody and everybody to get themselves uh, basically a coin loop. Now there are some really tricky coin loops to use, which are these tiny little things there. They're only sort of like this big, tiny, you have to get your eye right up close. I've bought myself one of these types of coin loops, which is, uh, it's like a, I don't know quite how to describe it. What's the box say? It's a Lumi Loop stand magnifier. So there's the brand Carson, not being sponsored by them or anything. I just found it on Amazon. It's uh, seven times magnification. You can get them in various different types. I think it was about 10 pounds. It wasn't too bad. Uh, and the general idea is you can get real, real up close. That's actually working quite be better than I thought it would on the on the camera. Uh, but there you go. You can get right up close to the coin. You can move around to see the different um, magnifications. And, uh, you know, it, it is really beneficial to get up to your coin, to have a look and see if there are any imperfections on it. Um, you know, that's what you're looking for at the end of the day. If you're going to go over this coin with a fine tooth comb, you want to see if there are any, first off, anything that you can see with the uh, with the naked eye. If there are things on there that are not perfect, then you want to have a closer look with a loop 
and then if under the loop you're still, if you're finding things which are not right, if there are breaks in the map finish, for example, on coins like this, or <clears throat> scratches, dents, um, then there's definitely things to think about in terms of next stages for your ownership of the coin or potentially returning, replacing, etc. So one thing that you can look as well at is that there will potentially be little marks on the capsules. It's very common to see marks on capsules uh, and a lot of people think, oh God, that's a mark on the coin. Now I did say don't open capsules, but what you can do is you can twist the tops of capsules without opening them. If you're very careful and you're not actively opening the coin and you're doing it in a safe way, not, not at a height like this and doing it you know, without doing it uh, to the point where you're gonna drop the coin, you can twist the capsule and that'll often reveal all the marks that are on the capsule other than the coin. Um, but please be doing that very carefully, not to open the capsule completely, risk the coin falling out and so on. Um, that's very, very important to do. Now, what do you do if you find an issue on the coin? So a lot of people uh, have asked, you know, for example, the, the Gothic crown coins right now, um, they are hen's teeth. You are incredibly lucky if you've got any from the Royal Mint exactly. And uh, the idea of sending it back, potentially not to get something returned to you because they might just refund you is the kind of proof coin owner's quandary. If you've got something that's got a little issue on one of these coins that you're not happy with, but the Royal Mint says, well, actually that's fine by our standards. So you're now, here's a refund or you have to have the bad coin. That's the kind of quandary that you're in. Uh, but generally speaking, I would say if there's something that you can see that's really obvious, that's got this big kind of issue on the coin, if there's a big scratch, big dent, big milk spot, something like that, then definitely look to send it back and uh, and say to the to the Royal Mint or Perth Mint or whatever it is, the US Mint, hey, look, this needs to be better. Can you get me something that's better? Uh, and if they can't get you something that's better, then see what the options are. Do they remint the coin? Do they, you know, I don't know, find you a replacement on the secondary market? There are there are other avenues. I'm not sure that last one is really applicable, but you know, for some for some coin experts out there, having a perfect coin is really important. Having those perfect 70 grade coins is the kind of holy grail of a particular set of a particular collection. Now one of the real interesting things is a proof coin standard as defined by the Royal Mint is basically anything above um, I believe PF 68. So 68 and above I beg your pardon. So if you have your coins graded and I've heard a few examples of this from uh, different people out there that they've had coins, brand new coins graded from the Royal Mint less than 68 and they have had their uh, coins refunded and replaced by the Royal Mint and reminted, which I think is fascinating because that's, I think it's a really good thing. Like it's bad to have a coin that comes that's not good, but it's really good that a customer service will look after you and get something sorted. I've, I've heard other stories as well of bigger coins, bigger gold coins being reminted when there's just tiny, Im it, like immaculate coin, but just one little tiny flaw on it. Um, you know, I, I, I had a very good conversation with a friend of mine uh, not too long ago about, um, you know, flaws on coins like this. And I said, well, you know, if you are spending certainly on the bigger coins like kilo gold coins from the Royal Mint, £70,000 on a coin, um, you are looking for something that's perfect. It's like buying a fancy car. Let's say you're buying a Ferrari. I'm sure you could buy a Ferrari for 70000 but my principle still stands. If you buy a fancy car for £70,000, you don't want it with a scratch. You want it to be perfect. So that's my kind of analogy here. And we as consumers really do need to stand up for what is right in terms of our coins, our standards of coins and our proof coins. And understanding what is right as well, I think is really important. So um, that's kind of my top tricks, tips and hints for proof coin ownership. Um, you know, there are, oh, I haven't even talked about storage. That's what I wanted to talk. I've got a little checklist here and it's got them there. So let's quickly jump onto storage. <clears throat> now, bulky items like the five ounce Gothic crown here. This is quite the bulky box for a five ounce piece of silver. You can see it actually takes up quite a lot of room. Now, if you're storing sets of these, or if you've got lots of these and everything in a safe, you have to have a big safe for it if you're gonna keep them secure. One tip is to just take the coin out of the presentation box, have this stored, because this is the vast majority of the value of the collector's edition, and then store the coin boxes separately. That's definitely a big tip to do. Coin grading is a great way to help to store your coins. You can get them all in these handy slabs that they're all uniform, they sit together. You can store those in, in safe deposit boxes or safe uh, safes at home. It's really very easy. The boxes, as I said, are really important, so keep care of them and make sure that they are stored correctly. Don't keep them out. Uh, you'll find that a lot of these types of things will, will fade over time if they're kept in direct sunlight and things like that. 
um, and it does make a difference it really does I can't emphasize quite so much how it is important to keep these boxes in as perfect a condition as possible and um, so that's kind of I think that is my last bullet point storage was the last thing I wanted to talk about um, well, as opposed to storage is another interesting one for silver. Sorry, this is a bit of a disjointed ramble at the end here, but storage for silver is interesting. So there are a lot of people out there who believe very firmly that you should vacuum seal your silver to prevent milk spots. Put those little um, like uh, anti um, anti moisture tablet things in there as well to make sure that things don't get milky. Um, I found that with with big proof coins like this or proof coins generally. Uh, if it's going to milk, it's going to milk. There's not a great deal you can do to stop that. You'll often find or see those milk spots within the first couple uh, of weeks, certainly if they've arrived. Uh, one thing that's really interesting, when they arrive by post, when they arrive by courier, which as most things do, um, you'll find that they've been in the van like overnight, so they'll be freezing cold in the winter. Um, and they'll come and if there are any issues, if there are any milk spots, that really accentuates them and then you'll see them straight away. Uh, if you want to keep them as pristine as possible and not have them uh, milk spotted, yes, you can vacuum seal them. But I think we've all seen proof coins in NGC coin holders, which have gone on to milk spot at a later point. So even vacuum sealing in you know coin slabs does not prevent milking. If it's going to happen, it's going to happen. There's not a great deal you can do about that. So now I think that is it for today's video. I want to say a big thank you to everybody who has been watching this far into my inane ramblings about proof coins and their ownership. And I'd love to know your thoughts and opinions on this subject. If you have proof coins, if you own proof coins, or if you are inspired to buy proof coins, if you have any further questions that I've missed anything that I haven't covered in this video, which is fairly probable, then please let me know down in that comment section. And if you have enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up button. Now, if you want to support our channel, the best thing to do is like, share, comment, and subscribe. But you can also head on over to our website where you can see some of our uh, limited stock now of our one ounce channel bars. They're available on our website as we speak. So head on over and check those out. Otherwise, that's it from me. Have a great week ahead. We've got a great video coming on Friday. It's a proper good piece of silver, let me tell you. Two pieces, actually. So subscribe to see that video. Otherwise, we'll see you next time. As always, please make sure that you like, share, comment, and subscribe for more.